The Mike Pettin Coaches Show, presented by Liberty Ford, continues. Welcome back to the Mike Pettin Coaches Show, driven by Liberty Ford. Time now for the PNC Bank Film Breakdown, as Matt Wilhelm joins Nate Orchard, the rookie out of Utah, who recorded his first two sacks against the 49ers this past Sunday. What's up, Dog Pound? I'm here with 2015 second round pick Nate Orchard, who had his great performance against the San Francisco 49ers with his first two career sacks. And just walk us through those first two sacks. You know, what had you been working on so hard after so much production at the University of Utah to not get any sacks? How great did it feel to have those first two? It was a monkey off my back. I mean, I've waited so long. It's almost been a full year since I last had a sack. You know, it's hard because my role in defense is, hey, help stop the run. And when pass opportunities present itself, I got to make the most of it, and that's what happened on Sunday. Um, you know, working all week, pass rush, and you know, still run blocking defense. Um, you know, this is it's just crazy how it all lays out. Um, it's got to be patient, and uh, and, and, and the opportunity present itself. You're almost untouched. So, how surprised were you on the first one? Tight end goes down, you know, something you have obviously seen on film. You continue unabated to the quarterback and get your first sack. We knew they were going to run the ball. And it turns to play action. Quarterback sitting in the backfield right there. I'm like, well, guess he doesn't want to block me. And not only one sack, but a second sack in this football game. Just walk us through that play and how you came again, almost scot free to the quarterback and got your second first sack. Well, the tight end that was blocking me, I could see in the huddle that he was staring at me while they were calling their plays out. And he had some big googly guys. I'm like, okay, this guy's doing something to me. He motions across the formation, and I kind of give him a hesitation move, slap his hands down, and, and come free. Who really on this football team have you been working with closely from a mentorship standpoint? I'm sure Anthony Weaver's helping you with pass rush, but what players are you working with, kind of keeping your heads up, knowing there's those sacks down there at the end of the tunnel? Most definitely. I think as an outside linebacker group as a whole, we uh, motivate one another, especially Paul Cooper, who's our leader in that group, um, and Brian Fleury, who do a great job you know, getting those drills together um, so we can work it throughout the week. The Seattle Seahawks now up next. You're going to take that long trip across the United States to play a very good football team, you know, winners of five of the last six. Uh, of the film that you've watched so far, what have you seen on film and, and hopes to have and add more sacks to your repertoire? Very, very mobile quarterback. I mean, Russell Wilson is one of the best, I believe, of the uh, leading rushing team in the NFL. And uh, we got our hands with. We've got a quarterback back there who can you know, run up through the A gap, B gap area and run outside and get to the edge. And so we need to do a good job collapsing the pocket and making him uncomfortable. Awesome, Nate. Well, thank you so much and good luck against Seattle. Thanks for having me. Coach, how gratifying was it for you, not only for the overall defense performance, but to see Nate Orchard, a guy who has been getting so much praise for his ability to set the edge against the run, to finally get to the quarterback? Because ultimately, that's what he was known for at yeah. Utah. No, it was great to see that, uh, that he's, he's put in uh, a lot of work getting to this point. And you know, some, rushing the quarterback, that, you know, the sacks, it's, the production usually comes in, in, uh, in bunches. And a lot of times it's hard to get that that first one and, and get going and get that confidence and get that momentum. Um, and everybody's thrilled for Nate. Let's talk about the Seahawks for a second. Arguably the hottest team in the NFL right now, Russell Wilson playing at an ungodly level along with Doug Baldwin. What do you have to do to try to slow down this team and turn in a defense performance like you did this past Sunday? Well, we have to play great complementary football. That, that's that's uh, critical, and, that, and that's, a, that's a tall task in itself. Defensively, they're playing well. Uh, they're one of the top defenses in the league. Uh, but we, we have to make sure that, that we're not putting our defense out there for, for 80 some snaps. We, you got to find a way uh, to um, you know to keep to keep the defense out and keep the defense off the field. And when they're out there, it's it's all about getting a third down and finding a way to get a stop. Uh, and that's where the Seahawks have, have been playing extremely well. Uh, and that, that's why we know this is this is a big this is as big a challenge we'll face this year in in a uh, in an especially hostile environment. What has made Russell Wilson so effectively lately? And do you guys kind of have, at least, does it help having Johnny here when you're preparing for a guy like Russell Wilson? Yeah, well, Austin, too, very, you know, who's a mobile guy, and, and he'll give us a, an outstanding look in, uh, in practice as well. No, he's, he's, uh, he's not trying to do a lot. That He doesn't, he doesn't make mistakes. That if, if, the, if the coverage is taking away the deep ball, then he, he checks it down. If they're, if they're creeping up and he gets a chance to throw one over the top, uh, he's doing it, and guys are making plays around him. Uh, they're, they're just playing really good team football. Absolutely. All right, let's get into hashtag Ask Pet. Now, talking about Seattle, it's one of the loudest stadiums in the NFL. you got the 12th man, et cetera. Do you have to do anything during the week to prepare for that kind of crowd noise? Well, typically what we do all weeks is we, we will play music during practice, uh, during the team periods especially. Uh, and this week I'll, I'll uh, have the standing order with the guy with the volume control to, 
to be a little bit a little bit louder than normal when when the offense is up to make sure it, it, it is really difficult and you know we might uh, you know some of the neighbors around Berea around our facility might be a little might be a little upset during you know during uh, Wednesday Thursday and Friday middle of the day but um, you know that's that's the that's the price we're going to pay. That's right. They get to be close to the facility. Number two, what's one aspect of the NFL game you'd like to see change? I can say for me, I'd like them to understand what a catch is. I'd like to have total. Clarity. Well, that's one, but I, I go even more general than that. I I just think the the uh, the rule book, just something's broken with the rules and 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 the officiating. That it, it's, and and I don't blame them. I mean, these are good men. I've spent a lot of time around them. Um, that uh, you know they work hard, but it just you, know, you pull out the rule book and, and it's like you're you're looking at at uh, you know the 2015 IRS tax code. I mean, it's just the, the, some of the things that that you that, that get involved with it. And, and I don't know whether it's a matter of simplifying it or or you know, I know Belichick's brought up the plan of of increasing the number of challenges coaches get or going to the going to the college system. And then there's talk of you know do you make the officials full time? Well, that's easy to say, but a lot of them you know that that's it's going to be hard to do, hard to transition into that. Is it? You know, do you make? There's been talk. Do you, do you just make the referees full time? Then that way they they prepare their crews a little bit a little bit better. And uh, I, I don't know what the answer is. I just know that in talking to a lot of fellow coaches around the league uh, during the week or or even pregame on the field, that that's that's been a common concern. And all right, finally, what's on your Christmas wish list? Uh, well, that's that's an easy one for the Browns. We want to win some football games. Yes. Give us give us some wins here. Give us some wins here down down the stretch and, and end the season on on a uh, on, on a positive note. Leave me alone for a little bit and let me take a nap. That's a that's as good a gift as uh, as, as any for me. All right, Coach. Thank you so much. Good luck on Sunday against Seattle. Great. Thank you. All right. When we come back, we'll have our player interview with Des Bryant, who's been a force on the Browns' defensive line this season. When the Mike Pettin coaches show, driven by Liberty Ford, returns on News Channel Five.